In this video, we're going to have a look at solving uh, problems in the second paper uh, of the IGCSE Computer Science when we're, where we are asked to spot errors in code. What they will do is they'll give you a bit of pseudocode, which is a, a small program. They'll tell you what the program's supposed to do, and you need to be able to spot where the errors are that prevent it from doing that. Okay, um, every paper that I've seen apart from one has had one of these. The one where it didn't have one of these, it had pseudocode there, but instead of spotting the errors, you had to look at ways in which you could improve the efficiency of it. But this is the most common one, so we'll have a look at a couple of these and how we can answer them. So this is a sample from one of the exams. It says, read this section of program code that inputs 20 numbers and outputs the largest number input. Okay, so it's supposed to take 20 numbers from the user and it's supposed to output whichever one of them was the largest. So we need to figure out why it doesn't do that. And apparently, according to this, there are three errors which stop it from doing that. We need to find these errors and we need to suggest the corrected piece of code. Obviously, in the exam, you'll have a little bit of room underneath to write that. Um, right, it's pseudocode. So you need to be really, really careful that you don't compare it to the programming language that you've been learning. Okay, you might have been learning Python or Visual Basic, and therefore you'll be looking at things like re, um, read x, okay, and the structure of the if statement, and you'll be saying that's wrong, therefore that's an error. But you need to remember that this is pseudocode. Pseudocode doesn't have a defined structure. And what we can take from that is that the chances are then that the errors that we're looking for are logic errors, they're not syntax errors. Syntax errors would be, apart from maybe an obvious spelling mistake, a syntax error would be pretty difficult in pseudocode because there is no defined syntax. So we're looking more at the logic of it. I always get students that point out this read, okay, and they point out um, that the print doesn't have a bracket here, or sometimes it says output and they say that's wrong because they're comparing it to the programming language that they're used to. But we can't do that because it's pseudocode. So we're looking at the logic, why the logic doesn't work. <clears throat> However, in pseudocode, we are going to assume that indentation still exists. And therefore, anything that's not indented correctly, we can point that out um, as an error. So it's not very easy because you're trying to second guess what they are thinking of as errors and what they're thinking of as just pseudocode structure. But let's have a go. So we've got h is 0, c is 0. And what it does is it repeats this until c is less than 20. It reads x. If x is greater than h, then x is equal to h. Okay, so we assign the value that is in h to x. And then c becomes c plus 1, and we print h. <clears throat> it's not a very good idea just to, unless you're really experienced with these and you've done loads of them, it's a good idea to trace it. Okay, what I mean is to write down what's happening with the values, because then you can be guaranteed, as long as you follow it carefully and you understand what the statements say, then you can guarantee that you will be able to spot the errors. Whereas if you just look at it and you just try and read through it in your head, it might be a bit more difficult. So we're just going to trace it. All I'm going to do is I'm going to put an H there, a C there. I'm just picking out the variables that we've got. We've got H, C, and X, okay? And by tracing it, hopefully, I will be able to see where the program has gone wrong. Right. So H at the start of the program is 0. C at the start of the program is 0. And it's what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to take some numbers from us and output the largest. I'm not going to trace it 20 times, because if I trace it once or twice, I should be able to spot what those errors are anyway. So it says, repeat this block of code until c is less than 20. So stop when c is less than 20. So what you can see from that is that it doesn't do anything anyway. It doesn't even run once because if we've set c as 0 here and we're running the code until c is less than 20. So it doesn't run. So this here must be our first error. Okay? So when I'm suggesting a corrected piece of code, I would say until c equals 20. Okay? Or until c is greater than 19. Right. So you can see that just by tracing it, just by doing a couple of simple steps, we've realized what this first error is. Let's carry on. Read x. Right, what it means by read is input. I could say that's an error <clears throat> because it's not in the programming language that I've been using, but it's not because it's pseudocode. That's allowed. So read x. If x is greater than h, okay, let's just put in a value for x. Let's just say that I've entered into the program 7. 
So if x is greater than h, then x equals h. So x is greater than h, so x equals h. So x becomes 0. OK? I'm going to run this one more time just to see if we can spot what the error is there. So um, now we print h, so we're going to output h here, which is our number. And then I'm going to read x again. I'm just going to say that I'm going to enter the number 9. And now looking at this program, I've entered the number 9 here. 9 is bigger than 7, and therefore surely if we're outputting the largest number, I should be outputting the number 9. Let's see what happens. If x is greater than h, it is, then x equals h, so x becomes 0 again and um, C, sorry, C becomes C plus 1, so I'm going to put 1, 2, 3. Okay, um, and print H again. So I'm printing 0 again. You can see that we've, the problem is, okay, that here I'm assigning the wrong way. I should be putting these onto here, because if I do that, if I just delete this here, right, <clears throat> if I enter x as 7, okay, if x is bigger than h, then if we if we just swap that over there, then what happens is h, uh, x goes over to h, okay, and then if I enter 9 here, x would go over there, if I enter 1 here, it wouldn't go over there, if I enter 14 there, it would go over there, okay, so that's my second error. My third error is a little bit more difficult to spot, but it's down here. This is indented inside the loop. We don't want to, we can probably assume just from common sense, that we don't want to output the biggest number every time because what it will do is it will do 7, then it will do 9, it will skip the 1, it will do 14, right? We just want to output the biggest number at the end, okay? So this here, right, needs to go there outside of the loop, okay? So we've got our three errors just by running through it and taking a couple of minutes. You'll definitely be given enough time in the exam to do this as long as you haven't spent too long on the um, pre-release task. So make sure you practice the pre-release because you might need a little bit more time than you anticipate on this. Let's have a look at another one. Okay, on this next one, this is more difficult. It says, <clears throat> it inputs 10 numbers, it checks whether each number is within a specified range, it totals the numbers within the range and outside the range. Okay, so our range, so well, let's see what's happening. In range is 0, out range is 1000, and then for count, 1 to 10. We input a number, so let's just see what we got here. We got in, I'm not going to write range, I'll just put out, just going to trace it again, uh, count, and what else have we got? Uh, num, and I've also got something down here that I've noticed, x. Okay, we've got a lot of, whoa. Let's try and draw that a bit straighter. We've got a lot of variables here. Okay, there we go. So we're just going to try and trace what's happening with these. Um, I'm already thinking that we might have too many variables in here and there might be one that's useless. So we'll input a number. Okay, I'll enter the number 40. We can just put whatever numbers we want in here because we're just tracing it. If the number is greater than 10 and the number is less than 20, so that must be our range. Then in range, we add 1 to in range. That seems right. Um, here we go. Else, out range equals out range minus 1. So 999. Right. You can see here something quite odd is happening. We're trying to find out how many numbers are inside the range and how many numbers are outside the range. But at the end of this program, let's say I enter 10 numbers and they're all outside the range, then this is just going to output the number 900, it's going to say 990 numbers were outside of the range. Well, how? Because I only entered 10, they were all outside the range, so it should, it should say 10. And this is actually a relatively difficult thing to spot, I think, because it's so ridiculous that you'd ever set that to 1000 um, and minus it every time that it, it sometimes sort of escapes you. So, this is our first error here. If we instead set that to 0 and then we add 1, okay, then it'll be much better because it will then just add 1 every time. So if I enter the number 40 here, 
Um, I enter. I put 40 in and I said it was in range, but it wasn't. Uh, right. So let's start again. 40 obviously isn't in range. Um, so let's say, well, let's say I do enter 40. What happens now is out of range becomes 1. Okay. Then I enter 8. Um, out of range it becomes 2. So we're not going from 999 anymore. Okay. Because the range is obviously 10 to 20. Right. We've got 2 now. Let's have a look at another couple. If you see here, count. Right. We've got here 4 count equals 1 to 10. Okay. Um, and then down here, we've got this next x. This next thing here, what happens is with these things, sometimes with a for loop in pseudocode, to show that they're going on to the next um, iteration of the for loop, they put a next down on there. That's perfectly fine. However, we've got this x here. This x is meaningless. It's not. It doesn't occur anywhere else in the program. The for loop iterator is called count. It's not called x. Okay, so that is our error there. Let me just remove that underline there because it signifies that that's an error. So this is our third error here. We've got this next x. Okay, right. The next thing that we're looking for here is that if we've got next count, yeah, we can get rid of this. This is quite a common thing that they do. For loops, they sometimes create an error in the exam by iterating something twice. If I change that to next count, then I have to delete this, okay? If I delete that, obviously then that's fine okay so here we've got something that iterates twice so our four errors would be that our outrange is 1000 <coughs> here it should be outrange plus one okay instead of outrange minus one and here we've got next x should be next count and then we can finally just remove this one here Right, let's have a look at the next one. And we should start to see a pattern because some of the things are the same. So here we've got uh, input 50 numbers and output the average, right? It's simpler than the last one. It's pretty similar to the first one. Um, now, after you've looked at a couple of these, you'll start to notice things pretty much immediately because they're the same sort of errors that come up every time. But let's just trace it anyway. So we've got total. Um, count, I'm going to call it CT because I'm going to run out of room. Uh, num, and uh, what else have we got? Average, is that it? Yep, so average. Let's do that. I don't know why these are always wonky. Okay, so total is zero. So just w keep going back and remember what it's supposed to do here because if, if you misread this, or you're not entirely sure what it's supposed to do, then it becomes impossible to figure out what the errors are. Because obviously the errors are completely related to what the program is supposed to do. Um, so we've got totally zero, four counter, one's 50. Input num, uh, right, so counter for the first time we run it will be one. Num, I'm gonna enter the number four, okay? Right, so input num, total becomes total plus one. So total becomes one. Counter becomes counter plus one. So counter is two. So we can see we've got a problem here. We've got two variables that are just adding, we're adding one to every time, okay? The total, which we use here to work out the average, should be the total of all the numbers that I'm putting in. It shouldn't just be adding one. So when you're trying to figure out an average, as you'll know from maths, um, you need to add up the total of all the numbers, then divide by how many there are. We're not doing that here. We're not adding up the total um, numbers, we're just adding one to a variable called total. So instead of that, we would have a num there, okay? So we've got four errors, we've got three left to go. Uh, okay, again, if you remember from last time, we've got counter plus one here, okay? And we also iterate it here. So what happens is we'll go one up there and we'll go one up there. So every time counter will go two, okay? And then here it'll go three. 
and then here it'll go four, so it'll, it will go up twice as fast as it should. Right, so we need to get rid of, rid of one of these. Let's have a look. There we go, we'll just say, oh, it doesn't really matter. We'll just get rid of this one here, we don't need that. So, that's our second one. Our third one, again, is something inside a loop that doesn't need to be inside a loop. This thing where we're calculating the average, right, there's no point in putting it in the loop. We're just using processing power unnecessarily. If you're getting the computer to work out the average every single time a number's been entered, then the processor is doing a lot of work that it doesn't need to be doing, and therefore doesn't have um, as much time to do the other things that it needs to do when it's apart from running your program. If you're running a tiny program, obviously this wouldn't be that important, okay? Um, but it is extremely bad programming practice to to figure that out every time when you only need it at the end. So what we do is we could say we'd swap line six and seven there, and we'd move that up and we'd just move that back there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say swap these, or if you said take average out of the loop, then that would also be fine. So we've got three errors there. The next thing, <clears throat> if we go through this again, so let's just, because I've kind of gone, we've gone ahead of ourselves a little bit. Uh, let's, say we've, let's say we've sorted all that out now, okay? So now total will be four, okay? The average um, is total divided by counter, okay? This is okay, total divided by counter. However, if we move this outside of the loop, we no longer have to say total divided by counter because obviously we've got 50 numbers. It is always going to be 50 numbers it's not going to be any less or any more. So instead of total divided by counter, we can change that to total divided by 50. And that is our four errors. I know that went pretty fast, but if you just have a look at this list here, these are the ones that are most common. Okay. These are the ones that are used most often that I've seen in the Cambridge exams. So if you're stuck or if you're just struggling to find that last error, then th if you learn this list here of the common errors, then you can sort of go through them in your head and see which ones you found. So the first one is that variables are often initialized with an inappropriate number. What I mean is that that first time we saw uh, here, where are we? There we go, we initialized out range as a thousand, okay? It should have been initialized as zero. Also, sometimes when they're, they've got something that's supposed to find the biggest number and they initialize big or large as 5,000. And obviously in the loop, if you've got 10 numbers that are lower than 5,000, they never end up replacing that number. So make sure that all the variables have been initialized with an appropriate number. Um, variable values being assigned to other variables backwards. What I mean is instead of um, x equals h, uh, it should have been h equals x. These things are extremely difficult to spot if you're not tracing the program. If you are tracing the program, it becomes a lot more obvious. Statements not indented inside a loop. So statements that are should be inside should be inside a loop are not inside a loop, so they only run once instead of lots of times. And the opposite of that, statements inside a loop when they should only be run once. Finally, incorrect use of greater than and less than. Obviously, to be able to spot that, you need to understand what they are. Um, but sometimes they will say if small if num greater than small then small equals num when what they mean is less than okay so look out for these because sometimes they swap them over okay and that's that